Hello and welcome to the Quebec channel. I am Jason, your host. As you can see, Bertie has decided to be on my new sofa bed. It is gorgeous. I love it. Um, I decided not to buy one of the cheap ones off Amazon because this was going to be something that I was going to have to use long term. It was going to be my real bed. And so I paid £700 for this unit, which is a mostly metal design. Um, it's not a day bed. It's not one to be used now and then. It's a bed that you can use for a very long time by the company called Funky, Fot Funky Futons. Funky Futons. .co.uk. It takes them about a month to make it because they build it for you. And it's gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. And Bertie likes it because he can now be up here. <laughs> Where's Zach? Zach is in the bedroom. With Lulo. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, Zach has really taken to Lulo. Zach sleeps in there with Lulu at night. This is fine because I've got the booty in here. Yeah. Me and the booty. It's a very firm sleep, so I like it. What are you doing? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Yeah. Let's just Yeah, I've put a cover over it at the moment. You got the Bertie's sitting there. Aren't you, you sitting on it like a good voice? Well, you, you pull it out and it's got a mechanical way of starting it, getting it right. And, yeah, works perfectly. When it's fully extended, it's a full bed. 195 centimetres. Bong. Um, it's a small double. And it's really good for sleeping on. Last night I went for a walk. I left the house without the Quingo. Um, it was scary. It was exhausting. But it was a good thing. Um, I'm not feeling 100% this because I've either picked up something from Brit or something from Ludo. <coughs> so yeah, I've got a bit of a itchy, crappy throat. But it's pretty mild compared to things I've had in the past. So all I'm doing is resting, doing a bit of pieces. Generally being... But yeah, Bertie loves this little sofa bed here. I still have nearly all my room for VR. So I haven't really lost any room because it's so low down that I face towards this area here when I'm doing VR. That's my where I face towards there when I'm... VR, and it, I've still got full movement of my hands for doing Beat Saber and everything. Going to sort out a few things today. But mostly have a nice rest, rest day. And let my body for, fight off whatever I've picked up. I'm working out and planning ways to reconcile all my computer bits and pieces into better versions. Yes, you're a good dog, Bertie. You're a good dog. You can still. You can't stop giving the doggy a law because the doggy thinks, oh, you 
You haven't given me a love in like 3.1 seconds. It's really nice having someone else here. So what I usually do at 6 o'clock is I open Lulo's door when I wake up. I get I get Cajol, Cajol Zach to leave the bed, which so he can go downstairs and have his breakfast and everything. But he doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay with Lulo all the freaking time. He's completely and totally besotted by Lulo. And so take him down, food and all that. I have my Huel. I prepare the coffee for Lulo and don't start you up yet because it's... And later on I'll just come up and give her a coffee. And decide what we're going to do today. I want to go start going on walks every day, even though I'm not feeling wonderful. Even if it's a small walk, um, just even if it's just a walk around the block, just for me to get used to it, to get over the instant exhaustion of all the coping strategies I have to have. It was, it was weird going out. It was like I had to keep. Focusing on both Brit and Lulo because we went to the train station to see Brit off. And uh, I was okay because they were right next to me in there. And then I had to keep touching the wall next to me, whether it was a fence, whether it was um, a brick wall. It was as if my mind was trying to ground myself in what I was doing instead of doing some, instead of one, my brain wandering off. So uh, that was the first thing I noticed that I had to keep doing to keep myself going. And then after thingy, the train station. Lulo held my hand or held my arm just so I had some just so I had a grounding and then we decided to go for a little walk around the area before going home by that time we were both exhausted anyway because it's been a long day yesterday but it worked really well, but just like when I first started using the Quingo, it took time for my brain to acclimatize to it. And the only reason this is possible is because I trust Lulo and I trust Brit completely. Unfortunately, this isn't something that could be used to get me into a job. Um, The train station was quite busy and hectic, and that was a bit of a freak out. But having my two friends there with me helped so much. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so yeah I'm really happy about the changes in the house I knew I was going to get ill you can't bring in another person's antibodies and, that, and another person's 
bacteria and everything into your house without that happening. You can't isolate yourself from it. Not if it's going to be a long-term thing. It's better to get you out of the way as soon as possible. Um, it's like Brit said. When he, when he went to America, he spent the first week laid up because American bugs are different than the UK bugs. And Lula will have brought over jobs from Germany. I mean, all different things like cold and flu and all these kind of things that happen to people are regional, usually. So the version that we have of a cold will be different than the version in America or in Germany. And um, our bodies aren't used to it, so it's easy for you to catch something. But yeah, kind of mellow. Having a nice morning. And yeah, yesterday was just so packed with doing stuff that I didn't have time to do a vlog until like, what time was it? Half past eight or something at night. I've still never missed a day. Even when I was at my worst. It's 2019. Okay, I've got my... Going to get a set of these for Lulo. Because they are really good for your circulation. People, when they see me do this, think it's very easy to do this. As um, Lulo and... And but found when they tried to do it like this, it isn't that easy. It's one of those things where you you learn how to do it slowly, and then I can do it really fast now. And and the, it's increased the strength of my hands. You know, think I was I started doing this early on um, when looking after Paula because it helped with the grip of a wheelchair. Because when you're moving around on a place like Stoke-on-Trent, pushing an 80, 85 kilogram wheelchair around, you can't allow that wheelchair to let loose. Um, because the area of Stoke-on-Trent has a lot of very big hills, very big... Um, steep places that you have to do because it isn't just the pushing up the hill that's the easy part it's holding on to the wheelchair when you're going down those hills because that pulls on different muscles in your legs and everything i remember once i did something that you would think was crazy i went down a set of stairs um with paolo in a wheelchair but the thing is, I had such good grip and arm strength because of pushing a wheelchair around the thingy that I could lower her down the steps easily. So, yeah. It's something that I don't even notice now. I don't have to think about how to do it. It's a bit like the thing that people do for manual dexterity with the queen, where they flip it over the fingers, the different fingers, and go round the fingers with the queen. No, it's that kind of dexterity that you're improving like this. And it's also a good reset. You see, as someone who is um, a gamer who uses a computer all, has used a computer all his life, that their chance of getting things like a repetitive strain disorder, or that, where, where you can affect the carpal tunnels and, that, and cause issues like that, is high but i've never got that because i'm doing a completely different movement the other thing i spend some of my time doing this 
I do game. I do do stuff on my computer a lot. But at the same time, even though I haven't left the house, I've never stopped exercising my body. Um, remember, my heavy weight is not because of me having to a sedentary lifestyle. Because I don't. I always do my Beat Saber every day. I always do my lightsaber routine in the backyard. And both of those are centered on a completely different way to move your hands and that. But these are a primary way to keep your... Very good if you want to give a woman a massage. Or a man a massage. Because you, you... Or a foot massage, leg massage, neck massage, anything like that. These are... Uh, increases the strength and the ability for you to do a good massage and to be able to continue that massage for a long period of time because that's the thing this is build builds a long term thing and the same kind of movement that you're using with your hand right there i think i mean my hands are more dexterous than a, a lot of people who are in their 50s So I might not go out and go on long walks. I might not go out and do any kind of, that kind of thing, like running or anything like that. But I have kept myself in pretty good condition. But I hope to even improve that with being able to go out with Lulo for walks. But we're going to start it slow, do little walks around the thing you play, the cemetery and that. And of course I have also downstairs the pedaling machine, which I use when I'm watching my a TV series or a film. Huh. Mm. Yeah, I'm still a bit sleepy, but I'm not sleepy enough to need sleep. How much sleep did I get during the night? Let's check. My first sleeper on the new bed. Okay. In pop out of the man. So let's check on my whoop. Ooh. Actually, 51% recovery, which is pretty good for me. Update now. So that's going to try and do an update. Sometimes it tries it to do an update. Sometimes it fails. So we've had our little ramble, our little talk. Sort of making up for last night. But yeah, as you can see, Bertie is just lying. You can just see his head as he's donked out on my chair. That's why I got the cover for it. It's a sort of not a dog proof cover for putting over a small sofa. Ooh, it has done it, and now it is just doing the reboot of the whoop. The whoop, 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 whoop. I'm happy. Um, okay, so that's done. Oh, yes, we are at 51% recovery, which is a lot better. Health monitor says I'm within all the normal readings for me. See, the nice thing about the whoop is it doesn't Take it from a standardised, oh, you're supposed to have this many beats, beats per mercy, or this much blood oxygen, and all this kind of thing. What it does is take it from your calibration. What is your norm? That's the thing that it does that's different the most. 
I like it. Um, it does a skin temperature. The HRV is 48. Yep, but resting heart rate is 71 beats per minute, which is near my average of 65 to 67. Um, respiratory rate is 18.5 per minute, but with repression per minute, which is near to normal, and blood oxygen is 93 percent, and my BPM is 80. <coughs> it's saying that stress monitors showing a bit of yellow. That's okay. Because that's when I set up my bed and everything. So it's gone into measuring your stress, which can. Most of your time was spent in the medium stress zone. You enter the high stress zone 12 times with a total duration of 74 minutes. The stress experience during the day has included sleep and activities. Not act it's very detailed. It's a very good data thing. So, let's see on my sleep activity. Okay, um, do, 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 do. you got sixty eight percent of your needed sleep, which is more than normal. I got three hours thirty six of restorative sleep, and I slept for six hours thirty four minutes. That is fucking amazing. That is fucking amazing for me. It really is. Um, so that's actually shows that sleeping on that bed is is good for me. And actually, being in this room is good for me. I mean, this is my primary, my place. This room, instead of the entire house, is good for me. So I'm going to stop talking now because my throat's a bit achy, not wonderful, but I'm good. I am having a good day. I've had a very good week. Um, I know some of my friends were concerned about me having someone come and live with me and that. But you've got to remember, this has been in the works for almost years. Yeah. The plan and try it. Because I knew that long term, living on my own, while it's possible... It is extremely exhausting living on my own. Extremely exhausting living on my own. Um, because of the massive amount of coping strategies needed to be independent. Just having someone else in the house who I trust, who isn't... See, if, it is, if it's a stranger, then I have to create another set of very powerful coping strategies to deal with a stranger in the house. But if it's someone who is a friend, someone I trust, then that's cut by 90%. The coping strategies are cut by 90% while that person is around. It's really amazing how good it is. It's just one like, like when Paola was here. The reason I was able to function for 20 odd years with Paola and be able to look after her and do all the things I did was because she wasn't an adversary. She wasn't a someone I had to cope against. Yes, I had to cope against her cancer. I had to cope against her diabetes and her dialysis and everything fucking else and deal with all those. But those were nothing like the, the problems I have being around strangers. Being around an unknown quantity. Paula was a known quantity. Brit is a known quantity. Lulo is a known quantity. They have been around in my life for years now. I 
I quite literally am happy to trust them with my life. And that's extremely rare to have someone so close. <laughs> ah. Reason I keep looking up there is someone's parked their car in front of my thing, which means if I if I wanted to go out with the Quingo today, then it would be hard to get it out of there because they parked on the pavement. I took up some of the pavement and my Quingo needs all of the pavement to actually make the maneuver. It's something disabled people deal with. People just don't think. Anyway, I'm going to shut this down now. Bye-bye.